In this video, we're gonna build this task details page where the user can click into a to-do and then update that task. Let's build out our widget tree and let's use our standard process. So the first step is to identify the atomic widgets, the ones that don't have any children. So we can start at the top here and we've got these two items here, which could be icon buttons. So let's just pull two out right here. Next, we've got some text right there. So let's pull out a text widget. Then we've got another text widget right there and this next one here you might think that it's another text widget but this is actually going to be editable so we're going to use a text field and after that we've got another text and then text field and then finally a button down here beautiful so that's the first step done next step is to group close widgets in columns rows or stacks so the first one will be up here these two items they're next to each other and even even though they're far away, we can dump those into a row. Then let's just bring all of these over because there's nothing else left to group right here. And we need to ask, does this need a background? Our third step? No, it does not. So we can go back to our second step and group items again. Well, this will just all sit inside a column. So let's grab a column right here. And then we ask, does this column need a background? And yes, it does. It's this white thing with the black border. So let's grab grab a container and that's it. Our widget tree is done. Let's go build it. So let's make a details page right here, details and create. And we don't need this and we don't need our column. And so let's put in a container. Then we have a column and inside that column, we've got a row and inside that row, we've got two icon buttons, one and command D duplicate two. Then we've got a text and then another text and a text field, then another text and then another text field, then finally a button. Beautiful. Let's come up to our container right here and just get with it, rid of that height and width so we can see everything beautiful. All right, next step is styling and alignment and spacing. So our first step is to set the determinant things. So specific height and widths and text. So we can start up here with our container and we need that styling, but we've got it with this theme widget, beautiful. Then we can move to our icon buttons right here. And if we scroll down to the bottom, we're going to need a back and an edit button. So let's search for back and we can use that. And we wanna change the button size to 50, the icon size to 30. We don't need a fill color. So let's come in here and clear it out. And we don't need a border. So let's get rid of that border. Finally, let's change the color to this gray. Beautiful. Now let's just take this actually and duplicate it. Select and duplicate, we can get rid of that. Then we can just change this to an edit with this pencil and we are good. Next, we need our title right here and this should say task details and it's gonna be of style headline large. Next, we've got this, which is our title of our task and this will be the details of our task and both of these have a style of label small. Then let's go to our text fields right here. And we've got a text field theme widget, but we're not gonna use that here because these are gonna be a little bit different. So all we're gonna do here is we are going to get rid of our label and we don't want it to auto focus down here. And we can do the same on our second one, none of this. And let's get rid of that label right here, beautiful. And we'll also get rid of a shift clicking here. We'll get rid of all of our padding. We don't need that. And that's all for now. Lastly, our button right here. Let's apply our theme style to it. And the button should say up task and we want to take up all that space. Beautiful, first step is done. Next, we set our alignments on columns, rows and stacks. And so let's start with our column up here. And we don't want this to use the maximum amount of space because we want it to be only the size of the content inside. So we're gonna shrink it down and it's gonna wrap here. Now, I know this looks small. Remember, our last step is padding. So we will get to that. Next, we're gonna set the cross axis alignment 
alignment here over there to take care of these little labels. And we'll do our trick with our text where we command B, wrap it in a row so that we can center it. Beautiful. Next, let's handle the alignment on our row right here. And we want these pushed off to the ends. So we set to space between on our main axis alignment. That's it for alignment. Now we need item spacing on our columns and rows. That's our third step, spacing. So we can come to our column right here and give our item spacing a spacing of 12. And that's all we need for item spacing. So we're on to our fourth and final step, which is padding. So where do we need padding? Well, all around these edges. So we can just come to this column right here, scroll all the way up, and let's give this a good 24 pixels right there. We also want to push off our container from the edges because that's what our design calls for. And so we can give it 24 pixels on the left and the right there. Finally, some just padding fine tuning. So let's give some padding to the top of our button here to press it off from here and a little on our details as as well. And the last thing that we're going to need is we want to center this in the middle. So we can do that one of two ways. We can take our container and just set the alignment to center down here, or we could wrap this whole thing in a column. So command B and then set that in the center. Either way works fine. And that's how to design the task details page. In the next video, we'll implement the logic.